Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast here with Benji as normal. This show is supported by La Col and it's the recap of Tour de Pologne Stage 1. I guess you probably haven't seen it. That's because the sale of the live rights to this race seems to be the worst of any World Tour race in this year on the calendar. There's I don't, no rights in uh, UK, Netherlands, Spain, Italy, I think, either. I'm probably missing a fair few countries. Well- in Belgium, it's like on Proximus, but What's that? I don't even know where I can find that. So, I What's guess. Proximus? <laughs> so, it's basically like a, an ISP, a, an internet provider, but also a TV provider and so forth. Right. And they probably have like one channel they do it on, I guess. But those are the ones that had the women's race and didn't comment on it. So, oh, I don't expect yeah, quality. <laughs> so, luckily in Andorra, I get the Le Keep stuff in France. It thinks I'm in France. So, fantastic for me uh we had bora hans grow up posting tweets with screenshots from tiz which is always hilarious when a corporation literally publicly shows himself committing an illegal act um they still haven't deleted them even though people called it out including myself and it's just all a bit of a shambles re- really like normally uh it doesn't have to go to eurosport gc in every single race they don't need a monopoly but you should probably sell it to someone in the major cycling jurisdictions uh, like the UK, Spain, Italy, etc. And so in front, they've taken the rights for a tour of Poland. They've tried to sell them, I think, separately uh, rather than bundled with Flanders Classics and other portfolio they have. And maybe, I'm guessing, could be a number of things. Eurosport were like, "Why well, we're not going to pay that fee for a one-off, one-week race that no one really cares about except me and Benji. Uh, or... It's timing with Olympics or maybe there was a problem with, I don't know. It's just really weird what's happened with the sale of the rights here and it's certainly not great for Tour of Poland. Barely anyone's able to watch this outside of Poland pretty much. And it's also not good for sponsors. I know I'm getting a bit long-winded here, but when you put races behind a paywall, it, it already reduces sponsor exposure. And then when you don't even sell them in some countries, like what are half these teams even getting out of sending their riders to this race? Anyway, long-winded rant. I'll introduce our show partner, LaCole, before Benji tells you the break. LaCole produced performance cycling apparel. There's the McLaren Project Aero collaboration, but there's also the lightweight summer collection for hot mountain climbs. If you're going to watch the Vuelta at the end of this week and get in, back into it and uh, get some inspiration in the summer, check out LaCole's lightweight collection on their website, www.lacole.cc. They also have a massive Strava club, uh, one of the biggest, I think, on Strava with plenty of discounts if you complete certain activities. But Benji, the break in Tour de Polonia, not particularly threatening. Yes, yeah, certainly. We've got a three-man break with Mikael Paluta, Fedorov and Bennett. Sean Bennett, that is, not Sam Bennett. And that breakaway just survived for a bit, took some KOM points. We have Paluta being the king of the mountain winner at the moment after the stage. And then the break got called because Bahrain and the Koenig and such were all interested in the stage. But next to that, another break formed and three men uh, escaped once again. Jos van Emden, Antoine Duchesne and Tom Scully. But once again, that break got caught eventually and we went to the sprint. But one important note is that before all of this, Akaman is out. He stepped out of the race <laughs> somewhere funny. in the middle of the race. And it was because he was apparently ill the last week and wasn't well, at 100%. Not funny. Okay, yeah. That part is <laughs> not preface, funny. Yeah. If, he's, if he's ill, that's not funny. But yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about this is that they've got a team here that is, well, supportive of him. They've got <laughs> Berghardt, Schwarzman, they're not the Bonner. biggest league outriders on their team, but they're here to help Ackermann. And now their leader has gone off to half a day because they sent someone that is semi-ill. So I don't know, perhaps it wasn't a good idea. I don't know. I, I, I hope he's okay. But um, I did laugh and, you know, I, I joked, I think, um, you know, maybe he's hung over from celebrating that obscene contract he just signed with UAE and he's not in fighting shape. That <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't surprise me either. So, yeah, kind of stuffed their ambitions. Like he would have been top favourite for today's stage, which I should preface, by the way, is so long. 220Ks, uphill cobbled finish, not sure if Benji said. They started at 130. It finished at like 630, just outrageous stuff. And, yeah, Ackerman was a big favourite for this stage. UAE, after he's gone, it really fell to UAE, who have Gaviria here, Bahrain with Bauhaus and his boys, Hausler, Morich, Seberg, Kapeki, Inkla. De Koenig have quick men, a quick man, sorry, Hodge, who's going to UAE, got announced today. Check out our transfer pod. 
uh, on podcast players with all those, those signings. And they've got Steels, Garrison, Declerc, Cavagna, I guess, doing the lead up. We've also got David Decker for Yumbo Visma, Benji and I keeping an eye on him. And the, the uh, debut of Vinium Geremayat into Marche today on a finish that suits him, similar to the Burgos finish, he came sixth in maybe last year. But Cavagna, Benji, it wasn't really taking control, was he? he? Was kind of was he sort of attacking in the last six k's? I kind of, I was trying to figure out what he was doing. Yeah, it was a bit in between. He was trying to like set up a high pace, but I think Cavagna was setting such a high pace that gaps opened behind him and that people couldn't follow. And we saw that several domestics of other teams just blatantly went to the side and were like, "Okay, my job is done here. I can't follow this man." And the TGV just kept on rolling for a bit. And honestly, I love him in that French shirt. Absolutely love him. He kept on rolling. And the thing with Koenig there was going from six to five to four kilometers. I felt like the rider they were missing was Hodge. He was in like 20th position and they had two riders at the front. I think it was Cavagna and Garrison. And then Almeida came over on the left side of the road, passing everybody in the wind comes to the front as well to help out, but Hodge is still sitting in 20 wheels. So from that point on, was I was waiting, okay, is he going to come forward at some point? Because uh, I was expecting that. Yeah, I just, positioning, it was pretty important. His finish was quite like, it was wide, but it was very twisty and turny. There was a last corner where Ineos were keeping their riders in good position. They appeared to be going for uh, Kwiatkowski, perhaps, I just didn't see that, to be honest. It wasn't hard enough for Kvyatkovsky when you actually yeah. looked at it. It would have been better to try some attacks maybe with Moscon and co uh, to, if you actually wanted to win this stage. But, yeah, positioning was really important. And all the trains, no real dominant train took over. You were watching Deca, Benji. Like, where was he with, say, a K to go? Well, Decker was in 25th position totally alone. And... I saw the last three kilometers, I looked at him and I, I did, just didn't see anyone around him and that stayed the same for the last three kilometers. He slowly moved up a few places, but you can't move up 20 places that easily without a single teammate trying to get you to the front. And I feel like there was one team that somewhat took control in the last kilometer and that was quick step going into that final uh, few corners with indeed Cavani still doing that but then the other riders of that team Almeida also helping out being the second rider behind Cavani setting a bit of pace and that actually opened up a bit of a problem for others because going into I think 400 meters to go it was entirely stretched out and we had the Koenig riders in the top four of that peloton and there was one Bahrain rider there and the rest of Bahrain wasn't exactly right in his wheel they were a bit behind with Mohoric and of course Bauhaus as well and that's when that Bahrain rider looked past and looked behind and was like okay they're not in my wheel I'm gonna open a bit of a gap and try and get them back again and that's when Bahrain kicked into action it was so smart from how so Hausler moves up hard in the right hand side bringing up Mohoric uh I think Bauhaus then slides on to Gaviria's wheel, who's on Hodge's wheel, so he's on the two other main favourites for this stage. Mohoric senses with this cobbled finish, and he's quick himself. He slides up the right-hand side, and he, he's going to try and have Hausler let his wheel go, which Hausler does. Hausler then tries to move over to the right side to block, uh, but it's too wide. So Hodge gets onto Morich's wheel. Morich stops his action straight away. And now Hodge is staring down the barrel of 250 metres plus uphill cobble with no lead out. And so he just starts his kick. Gaviri is on his wheel, then Bauhaus. They go over this lip, not looking good for Hodge until Gaviria cracks completely. The man who might be leaving Quickstep, Hodge, the man, the Colombian, going to Quick, uh, to, sorry, Gaviria might be leaving UAE. Hodge might be going to UAE from Quickstep. He's going to UAE. Gaviria loses his wheel, and this stops Bauhaus. And now Hodge is going off. Bauhaus then has to slowly close this massive gap to Hodge. He's got Hofstetter for Israel on his wheel and nails Hodge on the line, who completely runs out of steam. I think if Gaviria hadn't lost that wheel, Bauhaus wins this easily over Hodge, but he kind of got stuffed. Hodge got played a bit by Bahrain's hijinks in the last 400 metres, even though they didn't have a traditional lead out. It kind of triggered him to to go early. And um, Bauhaus takes, I think, his first ever World Tour win, Benji. Win it one. did? It can't I, be. Come on. Really? No, nah, nah, I made that up. I completely made okay. it up. He won a stage of the Dauphiné <laughs> in 2017, <laughs> yeah. a stage of Abu Dhabi. Um, That's still not in, much. In 2018. I expected more, kind of. <laughs> it feels like he's around forever. 
I thought he'd never won a world tour <laughs> race. He never won a grand tour stage. But this year he's won three dot pros and now a world tour race, admittedly at Provence, there where he did beat Damar and Co. Then two at Hungary, two, two at Slovenia, now two to Polonia. And um, they're not re-signed yet, but if I was Bahrain, I'd be re-signing the uh, Hausler bauhaus combo for right. sure. And Fred Wright, uh, even without him. But, yeah, what did you make of this performance from Bauhaus, Benji? I think pretty legit, and the margin was closer than it should have been. Yes, yeah, certainly. I think that the Hodge move was early because he was too – fast at the front of the peloton and because of that Hodge had to go or he loses momentum onto those cobbles towards the line so Hodge had to go at 400 meters to go and Bauhaus decided not to respond directly because he was like okay there's 400 meters to go so that begs the question did Hodge actually need to go already by then because if Bauhaus didn't why did Hodge need to go already um I don't really know I don't know what's going through his head. Maybe he's happy he just got the UAE contract and he wanted to. Um, but yeah, like, I, uh, maybe Benji. Maybe he was close, Maybe he didn't so, go. Maybe yeah, he didn't. Okay. I got a, maybe Gaviria, knowing that wants to go to Quick Step back to Quick Step next year from UAE, lets his Colombian compatriot, who's swapping teams with him, lets his wheel go as a favor. Yeah. What okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that it's actually not a bad tactic, knowing he came so close. Because Bauhaus had to dig really deep to try and counter what Hodge did here on those cobbles. But in the end, it's also the perfect kind of finish for Hodge in a sprint, I think. A bit of a cobble, slightly uphill sprint always fits him because he's also decent at those uh, those Belgian cobble classics, for example. And uh, I think he I think he won one last year, the GP for Mark, just an unlicensed race, but also very similar uh, kind of cobbles that they need to go over. But anyway, Hodge ends up being just short of a stage win here, Bauhaus very strong. And like you said, Bauhaus might have been on a soft schedule this year, but at least he's winning the races that he goes to. And there's a lot of sprinters that go to a harder schedule and just can't win at all. So he knows his level and he's gradually upping it because Bologna is harder than Slovenia and Hungary in my eyes. So I guess that in the coming days, it wouldn't surprise me if Bauhaus is one of the better sprinters on the flat sprints as well, knowing that I think the flat sprints would on paper suit him better. But do you think that a Gaviria will come in and haunt him a bit or are we expecting too much from a rider that is just not performing very well this season? Gaviria's shape looks terrible. I mean, he completely blew up here. I think he, where did he end up coming? 28th. So it wasn't an easy finish though. Not an easy finish, but his fitness doesn't really seem to be there. I'm not sure what the the next stages look like. I'll have a a preview stage two in a second. Top 10, Bauhaus, Hodge, Hostetter, Edward Turns, Decker, Dion Smith, Jonas Rickart. Germay! Yeah, Germay, eighth. Nice result for him. Moritz, ninth, and Kvierkowski, tenth for Ineos. Not sure if Owen Duhl would have been even better than Kvierkowski for this finish, to be honest. Yeah, Um, I I thought the same. And I was thinking as well with Gaviria being the choice of UAE, I think that I probably would have selected a Kovi for this one, but Kovi ended 16, so perhaps they did that and it failed. I don't know, but I feel like Kovi would be more likely my candidate for a, a hilly uphill cobble sprint, personally. I think Gaviria in form should be doing this, should be coming top three. Yeah, but like Gaviria in form is something we haven't seen in a while. Like, True. At this point, we shouldn't be expecting that, and it's it's a bit sad, but it's the truth. And like Gaviria in his first year, Trofeo Palma, one of those Mallorcan challenges he would destroy an uphill finish like this. So, yeah, it's he's changed. Yeah, I think without Ackerman here, it definitely changes the complexion of the race and puts a big opportunity for Bauhaus to take some more wins. Tomorrow's stage, another one over 200 k, 201 kilometers long, uh, and it's flat for the first half pretty much, or first like 80% rather, and then a collection of three climbs. There's the middle one's 2Ks at 9.2%, then 3Ks, 6% descent, valley of like 20Ks, and then a 1.5K, 8% final climb. It looks like it's actually steep then not so steep so it's actually quite a steep finish then like the last mm-hmm. 50 meters is flatter looking at who have you got for this stage benji it's got quick quick cost he's got to come top three takes and bonus seconds here yeah that's a good pick i think that when it comes to the riders that i do see doing well on this stage i would uh that's a good question. It's a weak start. Look at the start list here for a second. <laughs> there ain't, uh, ain't no Pidcock or Roglic here to, eat, to pick easily, is there? <laughs> I think a rider that I would like to see well in 
is like an Aliotti or a, a Fabro, those type of riders on Bora Hansgrohe, because they've got basically those two riders for this type of terrain. I would say, who would I pick over the other? I think Fabro was a better like climber, but when he comes to Punchy, I, I take Aliotti at this point personally. But it has to it. Turns? Is that too difficult, Mohoric? Edward Turns. Uh, Dylan Turns, the other guy. Oh uh, yeah, I like I like the guys who were <laughs> yeah, fighting for, no. <laughs> for the the Vuelta stage when uh, yeah. Tim Wellens, Dylan Turns. I like. Uh, they should be up like there. In form, Clark, but he's not. Yeah. He's shown that with his broken back a few months ago, right? Was it yeah. last month? I yeah. The tour? He, I thought his back was still broken. I mean, Ulysses got to. This is yeah, perfect true. for him. Like it's it's perfect gradient. It's flat, flatter section at the end. It, it, they've got to be him, or do you think Kovi Benji? Hmm. I think Ulysses will be the choice that they go yeah. for personally. I would hope to see like a Polish rider do well, like a Paterski on his old day, for example. Someone like that doing well, but I think it's likely that it's some of the riders we've mentioned already. Do you think that a Ben Tullet is punchy enough for a finish like this, knowing that he's gotten very well good results on La Flèche twelve before, uh, for example? It's just not as steep as the Murdoe. It's just mm-hmm. a bit, yeah, it's just not as hard. Um, I, I do think you need proper kick and speed to win this. That's why I was sort of going yeah. with the uh, Kwiatkowski type guys and Wellens, I think, is more tactically if it goes right for him. But yeah, I'm going to go with who did I say that I liked? I'm never picking Ulysses, even though I should. I should have um, thought about this beforehand. Because- <laughs> I'm going with I'm going with uh, Kwiatkowski. I think it's the safe Polish pick. Okay, I'm gonna go with the uh, unsafe pick, and I'll say get my. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I think I was a bit disappointed with even Garcia Cortina today. This is a sort of cobbled finish that True. really should Morgan's be for him. Twenty third. Yeah, it's just weird results. Um, but yeah, I'll be interested to see who UAE ride for. Uh, but certainly, I don't think a break will win. Uh, I think. No. Aliotti, if now that Ackerman's out, I don't know. And we always can't count out Quickstep. Maybe Benji, we're missing it completely, and Quickstep send Garrison and yeah. Cavagna on that last 3K 6% climb. True. Question. Jorgensen, was that not the guy that crashed out on a similar finish while the Ballerini won somewhere? In uh, Tour de la Provence. That was like 3Ks okay, 5%. Yeah. Not a steep, yeah. Um, yeah. And he's not been in as good a shape the rest of this year. But anyway, that was the Tour de Polonia Stage 1 recap. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, tune in tomorrow for Stage 2. If you want to support the podcast, you can like it down below if you're watching on YouTube or give us a review or a rating on podcast players. Ciao.